mobile robots work in unstructured environments and so to be useful in those environments they need to be able to sense the world around them. The most common means of sensing the world and another word for that is type of sensor is exteroceptive sensor one that senses things outside of the robot. Anyway the most common type of exteroceptive sensor is sonar range finding and we're going to look at a little bit of the characteristics of a sonar sensor. This figure depicts the process of using a sonar sensor. The first step is that a transmitter sends a pulse of ultrasonic sound waves. The range sensor is based on the time of flight principle, so when this pulse is emitted a timer begins. Then when the wave packet hits an object, that wave packet is reflected back towards the sensor. Once it's the reflected wave is detected, the timer stops, and given a speed of sound and air, this time allows the computer to calculate the distance between the sensor and the obstacle, or the object detected. So there are a few, I guess, mm, specifics to consider. First of all, the time gives the distance, gives twice the distance to the object because the sound wave goes the distance and then comes back. So the time for that entire trip is the time for twice the distance. And here's the equation to compute the distance given the speed of sound, the time for um, transmission and receiving the wave, uh, and then divided by two. <coughs> Another thing to consider is that the transmitter and receiver are all built into one package and so whenever the, the wave pulse is generated for a finite amount of time after that stops, the transmitter receiver is still vibrating. So there's a little bit of time whenever the receiver is not active because it's required to let these vibrations die out before waiting for or, or before sensing the reflected wave because otherwise if the receiver started to work as soon as the transmission stopped then it would immediately pick up vibrations but those wouldn't be from the reflection they would just be from the residual vibrations from generating the sound wave so an ultrasonic sensor has this time whenever, in between whenever the wave pulse is generated and when it starts to listen for a reflected wave. And so no sensing takes place in that time. And the result of that is that there's a minimum distance for an ultrasonic sensor. In other words, if an, obst if an object was so close to the sensor that its reflected wave would come back before to the receiver before the vibrations died out from transmission, then that object is not going to be detected because of the time that the sensor waits for the ringing to stop. Another thing to consider is the interference between multiple sensors and this leads to one shortcoming of ultrasonic rangefinders and that's they have a relatively low bandwidth meaning they can't take a, a really high number of measurements per second especially in systems when there are multiple sensors because each sensor fires sequentially so that there's no interference between sensors and what this means is that one of the sensors is only going to be able to take, after it takes a measurement, it's only going to be able to take another measurement once every other sensor in the system has finished. There is a threshold that can be set for our sonar sensors, and this is useful depending on the environment. The threshold means the amplitude of sound waves below which they're ignored. So if you're expecting 
really soft objects in the environment that absorb a lot of the energy from the sound waves, then you could set the threshold to be low because the reflected waves will have relatively low amplitude. The threshold can also change with time and this can help detect objects better because the threshold could be high soon after the pulse is emitted because any reflected sound soon after that is going to have a high amplitude and then the threshold can decrease with time since the amplitude of the reflected wave will decrease with time. And that idea of the amplitude decreasing as the distance between the object and the sensor increases leads to the fact that sensors also have a maximum range. They have a maximum range because beyond a certain point the reflected wave from an object is going to be too small of an amplitude to detect. So the range for sonar sensors is generally around 12 centimeters for a blanking distance or a minimum range up to 5 meters maximum range and the resolution is about 2 centimeters. Another shortcoming of sonar sensors has to do with the sound being reflected away from the sensor given certain angles and certain materials for the object. This figure illustrates that concept. If we had this room shown with the box and a robot in it, the robot could take a 360 degree scan with its sonar sensors. Now at some angles, such as when the walls are straight ahead of the robot or perpendicular to the sensors, the sonar range finding works really well. But at other angles, the entire energy of the wave pulse can be reflected away from the robot. And in that case, there is no reflected wave detected by the receiver and so it returns the maximum value. So it waits and waits and once it times out then it just returns the maximum value. So you end up with this map of the room if you were to take sonar range, sonar scan 360 degrees from one position. You have accurate readings in some places and then inaccurate readings in other places. So what can be done to obviate this problem is to use a history of readings. So one could move or turn the robot a little bit and then scan again and the angles with respect to these places where uh, poor readings were taken before would change relative to the sensors and we can get better readings then. And so you can update your model using a blend of past and current readings. Besides mapping a room, sonar sensors can be used for obstacle avoidance and that's a concept that is examined in another video. So once the robot has its path, which is part of path planning, and that's in another video also, which means the route the robot is going to take from its current position to a desired location. Once it's executing this path, if an obstacle is detected, then the robot will leave the planned route and find some way around the obstacle, then get back heading towards the goal. So sonar sensors are useful whenever the, the environment doesn't exactly match the map used to generate a path. We'll look at an example that incorporates some of the concepts of sonar range sensors that we've looked at. <coughs> Say we have a mobile robot that has four sonar sensors equally spaced around its circumference. We could have a circular robot, one sensor in the front, one on the left side, one in the back, and one on the right side. Each of these sensors has a maximum range of three meters. Now if that robot is moving at a certain speed, how far, what's the worst case scenario for how far it could move after an obstacle pops up a meter and a half away in front of it? So say the robot is moving along and then the obstacle pops up and then the robot and then right before it appeared then the robot had just finished scanning with its front sensor. <coughs> 
So then the robot will scan with its left sensor, its back sensor, its right sensor, and finally scan again with its front sensor. So, uh, and then it will finally detect the obstacle. But during all this time, it's still been moving. So in that worst case scenario, how far could the robot move towards the obstacle before detecting it? Let's start by computing the timeout for one sensor. This is the amount of time that the sensor will wait for a reflected wave. And this is given by 2 times the maximum range divided by the speed of sound. So we have 2 times 3 meters divided by 343 meters per second. So 17 and a half milliseconds is the maximum amount of time that a sensor will wait between transmission and returning a value. So it'll return the value 3 meters after 17 and a half milliseconds. So now let's calculate the worst case scenario time until the obstacle is detected. So that scenario where I mentioned before, the, the robot has just finished a scan on the front sensor, the obstacle appears, the robot will sense on the left, the back, the right, and then on the front again. We'll call that amount of time delta t. So it's three times this timeout for the left, back, and right sensors, plus two times the distance to the obstacle divided by the speed of sound. And if we calculate that, we get 61.2 milliseconds. So in theory, it could take up to 61 milliseconds for the robot to detect an obstacle a meter and a half in front of it. And if the robot has been moving during this time, then the total distance traveled would be V times that delta T, which is 0.9 mil meters per second times 61 milliseconds, or 55 millimeters. In summary, ultrasonic range sensors are inexpensive and common means of getting a distance to an object that's in a cone in front of the sensor, but this method is not without its drawbacks.